Hey, math explorers, imagine if the binomial theorem, the one you learned in algebra, could unlock derivatives, integrals, and even wild fractional derivatives like the square root of two the derivative. Welcome to Binomial Operator Calculus, a fresh way to see calculus that I'm thrilled to share with you. We're going to build it step by step with calculations that'll blow your mind. Ready to rethink calculus? Let's jump in. <music> Hi everyone, I'm obsessed with finding new ways to explore math. Today I'm sharing a framework I call binomial operator calculus. It uses the binomial theorem, you know, x plus y to the power of n equals x to the power of n plus n times x to the power of n minus 1 times y and so on, but with a twist. We treat f and g as functions and the exponents as operators like derivatives or integrals. We'll start with derivatives, move to integrals, Uncover the fundamental theorem of calculus, dive into fractional calculus, and solve real examples, all with clear calculations to show you how it works. Let's dive into the fun. Let's kick things off with derivatives. You've seen the product rule. The derivative of fx times g of x is f prime times g plus f times g prime. Can our binomial idea recreate this? Take n equals 1, f plus g, to the power of 1 equals f to the power of 1 times g to the power of 0, plus f to the power of 0 times g to the power of 1. Here's the magic. We define delta to the power of n as our operator. So Nangus, delta to the power of 1 times f equals f prime, the first derivative, delta to the power of 0 times f equals f, the function itself. Plugging in, delta to the power of 1 times f times g equals delta to the power of 1 times f times delta to the power of 0 times g plus delta to the power of 0 times f times delta to the power of 1 times g, which equals f prime times g plus f times g prime. That's the product rule. The binomial coefficients, 1 choose 0 equals 1, 1 choose 1 equals 1, 1 choose k equals 0 for k greater than or equal to 2, make the series stop at two terms. Let's test it with f of x equals x, g of x equals e to the power of x, delta to the power of 1 times x times e to the power of x equals 1 times e to the power of x plus x times e to the power of x, which equals e to the power of x plus x times e to the power of x. Check it. The derivative of x times e to the power of x equals x times e to the power of x plus e to the power of x. It matches perfectly. Our framework is off to a great start. Now let's level up to the second derivative, setting n equals 2. f plus g to the power of 2 equals f to the power of 2 times g to the power of 0 plus 2 times f to the power of 1 times g to the power of 1 plus f to the power of 0 times g to the power of 2. Map these to operators. Delta to the power of 2 times f times g equals delta to the power of 2 times f times g plus 2 times delta to the power of 1 times f times delta to the power of 1 times g plus f times delta to the power of 2 times g, which equals f double prime times g plus 2 times f prime times g prime plus f times g double prime. Let's try f of x equals x, g of x equals e to the power of x, delta to the power of 2 times x times e to the power of x equals 0 times e to the power of x plus 2 times 1 times e to the power of x plus x times e to the power of x, which equals 2 times e to the power of x, plus x times e to the power of x. Verify. The second derivative of x times e to the power of x equals the derivative of x times e to the power of x plus e to the power of x, which equals x times e to the power of x plus 2 times e to the power of x. It's spot on. Its binomial trick works for higher derivatives too. Time to flip things around and explore antiderivatives, where we set n equals negative 1. This is where binomial operator calculus gets really cool. The binomial expansion for f plus g to the power of negative 1 gives us an infinite series. f plus g to the power of negative 1 equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1. Choose k times f to the power of negative 1 minus k times g to the power of k. The coefficients are negative 1, choose k equals negative 1 to the power of k, so delta to the power of negative 1 times f times g equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times delta to the power of negative 1 minus k times f times delta to the power of k times g. Let's find the antiderivative of e to the power of x using f of x equals 1, 
g of x equals e to the power of x. Delta to the power of negative 1 times e to the power of x equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times the integral of 1 to the power of 1 plus k times e to the power of x. First, we need the antiderivatives of f of x equals 1, and each one comes with a constant. First, the integral of 1 dx equals x plus c0. Second, the integral of x plus c0 dx equals x squared over 2 plus c0 times x plus c1. Third, the integral of x squared over 2 plus c0 times x plus c1 dx equals x cubed over 6 plus c0 times x squared over 2 plus c1 times x plus c2. General, the integral of 1 to the power of 1 plus k equals x to the power of k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial plus the sum from i equals 0 to k of ci times x to the power of k minus i over k minus i factorial. Since the derivative of gx equals e to the power of x is always e to the power of x, let's compute the first few terms. k equals 0, x plus c0 times e to the power of x k equals 1 negative x squared over 2 plus c0 times x plus c1 times e to the power of x. k equals 2 x cubed over 6 plus c0 times x squared over 2 plus cc1 times x plus c2 times e to the power of x. Now let's sum the series, splitting the main terms and the constants. For the main terms, e to the power of x times the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times x to the power of k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial equals e to the power of x times x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 minus x to the power of 4 over 24, and so on. This sum is the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times x to the power of k plus 1 over k plus 1. Factorial equals 1 minus e to the power of negative x, so e to the power of x times 1 minus e to the power of negative x equals e to the power of x minus 1. For the constants, e to the power of x times the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times the sum from i equals 0 to k of ci times x to the power of k minus i over k minus i factorial. For each constant ci, ci times the sum from k equals i to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times x to the power of k minus i over k minus i. Factorial equals ci times negative 1 to the power of i times e to the power of negative x. Sum over all i, e to the power of x times the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of ci times negative 1 to the power of i times e to the power of negative x equals c0 minus c1 plus c2 minus c3, and so on, equals c. Combine everything. Delta to the power of negative 1 times e to the power of x equals e to the power of x minus 1 plus c. Since c is an arbitrary constant, let's call it c prime equals c minus 1. Delta to the power of negative 1 ton times e to the power of x equals e to the power of x plus c prime. Wow, that's exactly the antiderivative of e to the power of x. The constants magically combine into one, showing our framework is rock solid. When we move to definite integrals, those constants will cancel out, making things even smoother. Let's check it out. Right, let's use our antiderivative to compute definite integrals. The idea is simple. The integral from a to b of f of x times g of x dx equals delta to the power of negative 1 times f times g evaluated from a to b. From our antiderivative series, delta to the power of negative 1 times f times g equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times the integral of f to the power of 1 plus k times g to the power of k. So the definite integral becomes our main formula. The integral from a to b of f x times g at x dx equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times the integral of f to the power of 1 plus k evaluated at b times g to the power of k evaluated at b minus the integral of f to the power of 1 plus k evaluated at a times g to the power of k evaluated at a. Let's see if we can uncover the fundamental theorem of calculus by setting g at x equals 1, g to the power of k evaluated at x equals 1 if k equals 0, and 0 if k greater than or equal to 1. Plugging in, the series collapses to just the k equals 0 term, the integral from a to b of f of x, x equals the integral of f to the power of 1 evaluated at b, times 1 minus the integral of f to the power of 1 evaluated at a times 1. The first antiderivative is the integral of f to the power of 1 equals f of x plus c, where f prime of x equals f of x. The constants cancel f of b plus c minus f a plus c equals f b minus f a. 
That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Our formula nailed it. Let's test it with a quick example. The integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. Take f of x equals x squared, gx equals 1. First antiderivative, the integral of x squared dx equals x cubed over 3 plus c0. k equals 0, 1 cubed over 3 plus c0 times 1 minus 0 plus c0 times 1 equals 1 over 3. k greater than or equal to 1, 0, since g to the power of k equals 0. The integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx equals 1 over 3. Let's check. The integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx equals x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1 equals 1 over 3. It works, and the constants canceled out beautifully. Now, let's explore a formula I developed that works with just one function, kind of like a shortcut for integrals. The integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of k times b to the power of 1 plus k times f to the power of k evaluated at b minus a to the power of 1 plus k times f to the power of k evaluated at a over 1 plus k factorial. This comes from our main formula by setting f of x equals 1 and g at x equals f of x, and the constants from the antiderivatives cancel out. Let's try it with f of x equals x squared on the interval 0, 1. Derivatives, f of x equals x squared, f prime of x equals 2x, f double prime of x equals 2, f to the power of k of x equals 0, for k greater than or equal to 3. At x equals 1, f of 1 equals 1, f prime of 1 equals 2, f double prime of 1 equals 2. At x equals 0, f of 0 equals 0, f prime of 0 equals 0, f double prime of 0 equals 0. Calculate the terms. k equals 0, 1 to the power of 1 times 1 minus 0 to the power of 1 times 0, over 1 factorial equals 1. k equals negative, 1 squared times 2 minus 0, over 2 factorial equals negative 2, over 2 equals negative 1. k equals 2, 1 cubed times 2 minus 0, over 3 factorial equals 2, over 6 equals 1 over 3 k greater than or equal to 3, 0. Sum them. 1 minus 1 plus 1 over 3 e equals 1 over 3. That matches our earlier result for the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx equals 1 over 3. This formula is super handy for polynomials because the series stops when the derivatives hit 0. Fractional derivatives. Okay, here's where things get wild. Fractional derivatives. Let's try n equals 1 over 2, which is like taking half a derivative. Delta to the power of 1 over 2 times f times g equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 choose k times delta to the power of 1 over 2 minus k times f times delta to the power of k times g. Let's compute the half derivative of x using f of x equals 1, gx equals x. Delta to the power of 1 over 2 times x equals 1 over 2 choose 0 times 1 over the square root of pi times x times x plus 1 over 2 choose 1 times 2 times the square root of x over the square root of pi, times 1. The binomial coefficients are 1 over 2 choose 0 equals 1, 1 over 2 choose 1 equals 1 over 2 over 1 equals 1 over 2. So the square root of x over pi plus 1 over 2 times 2 times the square root of x over the square root of pi equals the square root of x over pi plus the square root of x over pi equals 2 times the square root of x over the square root of pi. This matches the riemann liouville half derivative of x. Our framework can even handle crazy operators like delta to the power of the square root of 2, opening up a whole new world of math. Let's put our main formula to the test with two examples to see when it shines and when it needs some tweaking. Example 1, polynomial case. Compute the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared times x dx equals the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed dx. The exact answer is x to the power of 4 over 4 evaluated from 0 to 1 equals 1 over 4. Use the main formula with f of x equals x squared, g of x equals x, minus antiderivatives. The integral of x squared to the power of 1 equals x cubed over 3 plus c0. The integral of x squared to the power of 2 equals x to the power of 4 over 12 plus c0 times x squared over 2 plus c1. Derivatives of g, g of x equals x g prime of x equals 1, g to the power of k, k of x equals 0 for k greater than or equal to 2. k equals 0, 1 cubed over 3 plus c0 times 1 minus 0 plus c0 times 0 equals 1 over 3. k equals 1, negative 1 to the power of 4 over 12 plus c0 over 2 plus c1 
times 1 minus 0 plus c0 over 2 plus c1 times 0 equals negative 1 over 12. k greater than or equal to 2, 0. Sum 1 over 3 minus 1 over 12 equals 4 minus 1 over 12 equals 1 over 4. It matches perfectly. The series stops because g's derivatives vanish. Example 2, non-polynomial case try. Try the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared times e to the power of x dx approximately equals 0 0.718. Exact, the integral of x squared times e to the power of x dx equals e to the power of x times x squared minus 2x plus 2 evaluated from 0 to 1 equals e minus 2 approximately equals 0 0.718. Main formula with fx equals x squared, g of x equals e to the power of x, the integral of x squared to the power of 1 equals x cubed over 3 plus c0, the integral of x squared to the power of 2 equals x to the power of 4 over 12 plus c0 times x squared over 2 plus c1 minus g to the power of k of x equals e to the power of x. k equals 0, 1 cubed over 3 plus c0 times e minus 0 plus c0 times 1 equals e over 3 approximately equals 0 0.906. k equals 1, negative, 1 to the power of 4 over 12 plus c0 over 2 plus c1 times e minus 0 plus c0 over 2 plus c1 times 1 approximately equals negative e over 12 approximately equals negative 0 0.226. The series keeps going because e to the power of x's derivatives never stop and it often converges to the wrong value like 0.3587 in my tests. Our formula loves polynomials where g's derivatives become 0 but non-polynomials like e to the power of x can trip it up. For things like 1 over 2, factorial equals the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power of 1 over 2 times e to the power of negative x dx, improper integrals add extra challenges. There you have it. Binomial operator calculus is a game changer, blending derivatives, integrals, and fractional calculus into one binomial-powered adventure. I hope you're as excited as I am to explore math in new ways. Take on the quiz below to test your skills and drop a comment. What's the weirdest derivative you'd want to try with this? Hit that subscribe button for more math magic, and let's keep exploring the universe of numbers together.